Hello, everybody. We are on chapter 29 of Proverbs today. For people who hate discipline and only get more stubborn, there'll come a day when life tumbles in and they break. But by then, it'll be too late to help them. When good people run, run things, everyone is glad. But when the ruler is bad, everyone groans. If you love wisdom, you'll delight your parents, but you'll destroy their trust if you run with whores. A leader of good judgment gives stability. An exploiting leader leaves a trail of waste. A flattering neighbor is up to no good. He's probably planning to take advantage of you. Evil people fall into their own traps. Good people run the other way, glad to escape. The good-hearted understand what it's like to be poor. The hard-hearted haven't the faintest idea. A gang of cynics can upset a whole city. A group of sages can calm everyone down. A sage trying to work things out with a fool gets only scorn and sarcasm for his trouble. Murderers hate honest people. Moral folks encourage them. A fool lets it all hang out. A sage quietly mulls it over. When a leader listens to malicious gossip, all the workers get infected with evil. The poor and their abusers have at least something in common. They can both see. Their sight, God's gift. Leadership gains authority and respect when the voiceless poor are treated fairly. Wise discipline imparts wisdom. Spoiled adolescents embarrass their parents. When degenerates take charge, crime runs wild, but the righteous will eventually observe their collapse. Discipline your children. You'll be glad you did. They'll turn out delightful to live with. If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves, but when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. It takes more than talk to keep workers in line. Mere words go in one ear and out the other. Observe the people who always talk before they think. Even simpletons are better off than they are. If you let treat people treat you like a doormat, you'll be quite forgotten in the end. Angry pe people stir up a lot of discord. The intemperate stir up trouble. Pride lands you flat on your face. Humility prepares you for honors. Befriend an outlaw and become an enemy to yourself. When the victims cry out, you'll be included in their curses if you're a coward in their cause in court. The fear of human opinion disables. Trusting in God protects you from that. Everyone tries to get help from the leader, but only God will give us justice. Good people can't stand the sight of deliberate evil. The wicked can't stand the sight of well-chosen goodness. That is again the message translation of Proverbs 29. And again, there is a ton of stuff that we could go over, but we'll only be able to go over a couple things, I think. Um, some of the more logical points <clears throat> of this is of this chapter is like verse 23, pride lands you flat on your face, humility prepares you for honors. So we've seen this a couple times in Proverbs where um, he warns that if you don't keep your pride in check, you will eventually fall on your face. And I think we see this um, in Hollywood right now. I think we see it on a couple stages in the political realm. You are so prideful that you think you can get away with anything that everything's always going to go your way and you will eventually get called out for it. So word to the wise, keep your pride in check. Keep yourself humble. Murderers hate honest people. <laughs> they seek their ruin. Um, so the, the New International Version said, The bloodthirsty hate the upright, but the just seek his soul. So... If you are a murderer, a bloodthirsty, evil person, basically somebody who is a fool who's not seeking out wisdom, they can't stand being around people who are doing the opposite, who are moral people, who are upright people, who are seeking wisdom, who are taking responsibility for themselves. And the just, basically. So the just are seeking their own soul. They're seeking God's word. They're seeking how to live correctly. They're seeking a relationship with him. And it's just a warning. Those who are not doing that, they cannot stand you if you are just, if you are wise, if you are um, leading an upstanding life. A flattering neighbor is up to no good, verse 5. He's probably planning to take advantage of you. So that is a really logical piece of wisdom there. Just don't don't be overly innocent. We need to treat all people with respect. We need to 
assume that people are doing the best that they can and assume the best of their works, but don't be foolish. Don't be naive. If somebody all of a sudden just is falling over themselves flattering you, go with the gut feeling that God put in you for a reason and know that they're probably needing something for you. The very first verse of the chapter says, For people who hate discipline and only get more stubborn, there'll come a day when life tumbles in and they break. But by then, it'll be too late to help them. So I found this as a bit of a warning. There is a time in which somebody who is overly stubborn, who who does not want to seek discipline, and even, as much as you talk to them, um, this can go from you talking to them about Jesus, about accepting um, God as their savior, to just getting their life in order, there comes a time in which if they are digging in their heels, as much as it breaks your heart knowing that there, there is coming the day where they're just going to slam up against the wall and everything's going to break, um, you have to be wise in how long you are constantly with that person because the more that you are with somebody who refuses Jesus, who refuses to take responsibility for themselves, so responsibility could even be somebody who is who has accepted Jesus but just doesn't want to live the way that they're supposed to. It is their choice. You are not responsible for their decisions and I find that really hard sometimes to deal with um, because I like to think that if you could just keep talking reason to somebody that they will change their mind, but that's, that's not always true. And this verse is saying that they um, will hit a wall, things will break down, and then it's too late to help them. So a warning to try to help them beforehand, try to reason with them, but then I think it's kind of like, if they're going to choose not to move away because everything's going to come crashing down, you don't want to go get caught up with it. And you also don't want to miss out on the opportunity of helping others or discipling others just because you've spent too much time with somebody who has really decided on their by their own accord not to accept Jesus or their responsibility or the way that they're supposed to live or anything like that. Verse 6, evil people fall into their own traps. Good people run the other way, glad to escape. I think that this is something like good people, good people, moral people, people who are living up to the standards that God has sort of put in place for us, people who are taking responsibility for them, themselves and their actions, who have said, okay, God, you are my savior, but I also have to bear the burden of who I am. I have to be responsible for myself and for my family, and I have to live as Jesus did. Jesus was responsible for himself. He loved others, but he kept himself responsible in doing what he heard the Father tell him to do. You have to listen to your conscience, you have, which is the Holy Spirit. You have to understand, like, when you get that, that feeling, that knowing in your spirit that that's not a good place to go, you need to obey that. You know, just do it. Just God has given you a conscience the whole in the in the Holy Spirit, and it works in different ways in people. Some people get just sick to their stomach. Some people get the shivers. Some people, you know, get sort of a, a picture in their head of a different way to go or a different thing to do or just to not go out that night or whatever. And just heed that advice, that Holy Spirit talking to you. That. Um, whether it comes out in a physical way or in a mental picture, God is helping you. So verse 18, and I'll probably end with this. If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. So if you don't know what God is doing, you either need to read the Bible, which um, can be difficult, I know, but... If you read the Message Translation or the Living Bible Translation, those are some pretty comprehensive translations to read. They're, they're not difficult. Um, I'm always reading from the Message. I think it, it, the translation is pretty good. So reading the Bible will help, help you understand what God's doing, help you understand how He works, who He is, um, sort of what He has said is going to happen, and you know what, 
what is kind of going on in the world. You'll get more wisdom that way. But you can always ask him for it too. You can ask him to reveal to you what what are you doing, God? What's going on? You know, either when something good is happening or when something bad is happening. But he says that he works all things for the good of those who love him. So even if something bad is going on, just ask him to reveal to you what is the good that can come out of this. What are you doing in the background? He is your father. He wants you to ask him. He would love to reveal that to you. And again, this is something that you could probably find a couple testimonies within your church or your your community or probably on YouTube of just the little things that God has done it has revealed to people to help calm their anxiety or help encourage them in a moment. But God is willing to tell you what's happening. God is willing to encourage you. He really doesn't want you to get bogged down. And I'm somebody who can get bogged down in sort of the statistics or the rabbit hole that I can go in, the the politics or just the way the world's going, the dangers, all, you know, lots of different things. I got sucked down the rabbit hole of South Africa last week and was just horrified to find out all the horrible things that are happening to people over there. But I had to stop and I had to go back to the Word and I had to believe that God is bigger that he is doing something bigger, that he is working miracles behind the scenes, and that he is bringing his people to a point of revelation, even over there, even in the midst of chaos, even in the midst of kind of some really cruddy things going on. So he can reveal it to you either through his word or through your prayers and sort of just ideas and um, thoughts that he gives you. So... Again, there's tons that we can that we can go through, but just remember, keep your pride in check. You don't want to fall flat on your face. Um, don't be naive about people around you. You know, always think the best of them, but don't don't fall for silly traps. Be wise. Don't be foolish. If you like this video, please hit like, hit the subscribe button, and hit the little bell if you want to be notified of more videos to come. See you later.